top 5 laptops for under $1,500. So I specifically made this video so that you guys know which laptops to ask from your loved ones or which laptops should you give for yourselves. Or if you guys have been good girls and boys, you can give Santa the specific model number and the specs of the laptop that you desire and he might just bring it to you. Anyways, before we proceed, all the prices I'm about to mention is based on the prices here in the Philippines. So prices and availability may vary depending on where you live. Also, this list of laptops are just based on my opinion. So just use the information I mentioned as a basis on what features and specifications you should look for in a laptop. With that being said, let's move on to the first laptop on our list, the Asus ROG Strix G. This laptop costs $1,570 or around 80,000 pesos. Now this laptop is perfect for architects and architecture students who are looking to buy their first laptop for architectural programs and you know, maybe do a little bit of gaming on the side. You know, architectural games like Minecraft or Sims so you don't feel guilty about gaming when you have a project due the next morning. Anyways, this laptop has a 15.6 inch screen which is the perfect size for a laptop. Anything bigger and you will have trouble carrying it around and anything smaller and you are gonna need to use a magnifying glass just to align your lines properly in AutoCAD. So this has a 9th gen i7 9750H processor which has 6 physical cores and 12 threads. Which means you get more cores for multitasking so you can switch between AutoCAD and SketchUp with no problem. And you will also get faster render speeds for CPU intensive renderers like V-Ray. As for the RAM, you get 8 gigs of RAM which is all you need for everyday Revit and AutoCAD tasks. Just make sure you don't have too much Google Chrome tabs open. You know, that browser just eats up RAM like crazy. So for the graphics card, this laptop has a GTX 1650 NVIDIA graphics card which has 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Basically what that means is that this can handle 3D models with lots of faces and will make revolving in SketchUp or Revit buttery smooth. Cause let's be honest guys, 50% of your time 3D modeling is spent rotating your 3D model around. Like this video if you're guilty of this or you know someone who is guilty of this. Anyway, moving on. Lastly, this laptop has 512 gigabytes of PCIe M.2 NVMe SSD. I know that just sounds like I had a stroke mid-sentence and just mumbled out a bunch of random letters. But basically what that is, is a high speed storage where you can save your large files faster. Cause you know, when you're working on a really important project, you gotta save every five minutes. And sometimes it takes forever to save. So this SSD storage solves that problem and reduces your save times. Aside from this SSD, you have a 1TB hard drive where you can back up your project files for long term storage. Remember guys, always create multiple copies of your files Take it from me, I learned that lesson the hard way. Anyways, other features of this laptop is that it has an RGB lighting on the bottom of your laptop and on your keyboard. So if you're into that RGB master race lifestyle, this is the laptop for you. The only downside to this laptop is that it doesn't have a webcam, but who uses their laptop's webcam anyway? Your grandparents? I don't know where I was going with that joke. Anyways, that is our first laptop. The next laptop on our list is the MSI GF75. I'll place the actual model number on the screen and in the descriptions below because it's long AF and I will sound like I had a stroke again. Anyways, this laptop is a bit cheaper than our first laptop at around 1,500 US dollars or 75,000 pesos since it is on sale as of recording this video. So this one has similar specs as our first laptop, meaning it has the same i7 9750H processor, same 8 gigs of RAM, and same GTX 1650 graphics card. The only difference is that this only has 256 gigabytes of super fast SSD storage, and the keys can only light up red, as opposed to the RGB keyboard of our first laptop. But this one has a larger screen at 17.3 inches, which is almost 2 inches bigger than our first option, which makes this laptop better for media consumption and 3D modeling, if you don't mind the extra bulk. In my opinion, I would choose the first laptop on our list over this one because of the better specs, but when it comes to the looks, I prefer this MSI laptop because it has a sleeker and more professional look to it. The next laptop on my list is the Lenovo Yoga C640 
which comes in at roughly $1,300. So unlike our first two laptops, this one has a 10th gen i7-10510U processor, which unfortunately only has four cores and eight threads, which is like two cores less than our first two options. And it only has Intel's integrated graphics, which means that this does not have a dedicated graphics card, meaning you can only model residential houses with this laptop. Anything bigger and more complicated than that will definitely make this notebook struggle. So why did I place this notebook on my list you say? Well this notebook is for those who already have a powerful rendering PC at home and is looking for a light portable laptop that they can use at school. So one of the features I love about this laptop is that it can be folded into this tablet form factor where you can use a stylus to create drawings, sketches, and anything that your heart desires. Like weird Sasuke drawings or stuff like that. Anyways, if you're looking for a laptop that perfectly complements your rendering PC at home, this Lenovo laptop is a great choice you should look into. Let's move on to the fourth item on our list. So the makers of our fourth laptop is near and dear to my heart since it is the same brand as my first laptop and that brand is Acer. So for this one I'm going with the Acer Aspire 7 which is similar to mine. I had an Acer Aspire 4570G back when I was in college which is actually an i5 laptop but you know I managed to survive and render all of my rendering. So yeah as long as your laptop has an i7 processor you don't have anything to worry about when it comes to rendering. Anyways our fourth laptop comes in at $1,150 or roughly 60,000 pesos. The Acer Aspire 7 has a Core i7-9750H processor, so the same as our first two laptops. The only difference is that this one has a GTX 1050 instead of a GTX 1650. Meaning that this laptop has a less powerful graphics card, but it could still handle any 3D modeling project your college professor will chuck at you. So this has the same screen size as our first ones, again, at 15.6 inches. So aside from those other specs, this laptop has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is twice that of our two listings. Now this will come in handy when you are trying to render large scenes and when you are multitasking with more than two modeling programs open. So for those of you who may not know what RAM is for, it is kind of like a pocket that your computer utilizes to temporarily store information regarding programs you are using. So for example, you are going to render with V-Ray, your PC is going to store all your render information in the RAM first while it is rendering. So if you experience crashes when modeling or rendering, chances are that your computer doesn't have enough RAM to store the information your programs are utilizing. So there you go. Explain that to your parents when they ask you why you need to upgrade your RAM for your laptops. Anyways, we are now down to the last laptop on our list, which is the Dell G7 7590 gaming laptop. So you guys may notice that most of the laptops on my list are gaming laptops and that is because most hardware used by games are also the ones used by architectural softwares. So I guess you could say that architecture softwares are just games that are less fun. Anyways, I'm getting super off topic. Back to the Dell G7 7590. So spec-wise, this laptop is similar to our first, second, and fourth laptops. It has the same i7-9750H processor, same 15.6-inch screen, same 8GB of RAM. So the only difference is that this has a GTX 1660 Ti, which is the most powerful video card on our list. This video card can handle any model you chuck at it without even breaking a sweat. But this comes at a price. This laptop comes in at a discounted price of $1,500, but its regular price is at $1,700. So if you can find a store that sells this for $1,500, then it's your lucky day since it is the most powerful laptop on this list graphics-wise. So basically what this means is you can run any new AAA game title on this thing, no problem. Thank you.